does building thinking classrooms actually work in kindergarten? Short answer, we'll see. We will see. Um, I don't know about you, but if you are a younger kid teacher, you've been in a thousand PDs where they're like, showing you an example for like third grade or fourth grade, and they're like, oh, we'll just differentiate down for your grade level. And it's very frustrating to be like, well, you can say that, but do you really understand what it takes to work with kindergartners? Like, do you, do you really understand what it takes to work with little kids? Like, things don't just differentiate down magically when you're working with kindergartners. So I came across this book over the summer, and I was thinking to myself, like, is it really K-12? Like, will that actually work? But I saw teachers raving and raving about this book. So I was like, all right, I'm going to check it out. Because I don't know about in your school, but in my school, my county, they've been, there's a real push for high quality math tasks and thinking tasks and pr productive struggle, which is great. I understand the value of those things, but there was never really a framework to make that happen. So I was like, I'm going to give this book a try and we will see what happens. The first thing about this book that I did appreciate is that the author was in a lot of different classrooms and did a lot of experimentation with younger student in kindergarten classroom, first grade, second grade, all the way up to 12th grade. So I did appreciate that there was an understanding that there is a nuance that's different when you're working with younger kids. So that already was like, all right, all right, we'll see. So anyway, I'm reading this book and I was like, I could really see this happening. I was lucky enough to be in a school where they just renovated and I have whiteboards all over my classroom. And I know that, that is not the case for everybody. So I am grateful for that. And I was thinking, well, how am I going to use all of these whiteboards? And then I stumbled across this book. Perfect. I have the whiteboards already. I have the tools, the original tools to make this happen. All right. So now what? So going into a quick recap of building thinking classrooms and kind of the premise. The idea is that students when they're in a math classroom or any classroom, kind of learn what it's like to be a student and do student activities. But because they're following this routine, they're not really ever thinking. They're just kind of mimicking or, or doing things that they think they should be doing instead of actually engaging in the problem. So this book gave kind of a framework to work with to kind of break the kids out of those ideas and really get them to start thinking. Now, I do have the benefit of being in kindergarten, even if kids had been in our school, like did preschool at our school instead of a different school. It's brand new for them to be in this setting, this kindergarten setting, so they didn't really have those ideas to break down, but we had our own challenges, like working with a partner and trying to do something together. So those are definitely things that I had thought about and had to work through using this methodology. In kindergarten. So an overview of kind of what the setup was like, the students needed to be in random groups, which I'm cool with. I like the idea of kids working in random groups. So I had to figure out the best way to have them be in random groups. I tried picking cards, I tried computer randomizers. The cards worked better for me in the beginning. Now we've moved through and can do the computer card, the computer randomized groups. Sometimes I think that it still just runs smoother when they're working the cards. Second, how to use your marker. Not to push too hard, sharing the marker was definitely something we had a whole lesson on and lots of practice on. Third thing I had to think about, how do I get these kids to work together for a common goal? Because kids at five and six are still very all about me, very self-centered and really getting them to understand that the goal is to solve this problem and that your partner might be able to help you was definitely something that they had to work on. We worked through together and luckily the kids really started to understand this, which was great. And in other areas of class, the kids had used whiteboards before, but the last whiteboards and something that the book really emphasizes is using a vertical non-permanent surface because standing up is different than sitting down. It's a different kind of way to engage with material. And also, since it's not permanent, kids are more willing to try something new and make a mistake because it's easily erased. And, and I wanted to utilize it, which is part of the reason that I was so drawn to this book. I was like, what am I going to do with all of these whiteboards? How can I best utilize this that I have in my room 
to really support my students in growing their math minds. So bringing it in to what we actually started with and where we are up to now. Now what? Small groups, got it. Random groups, ooh, ee, that's where we're having some trouble. Not because I have a problem with random groups. Kindergartners are very much like, well, I wanna work with this person. So the first order of business was understanding that your group is random and this person is your partner for today, but they won't be for your partner next time. They won't be your partner forever. So that was something that my kindergartners really had to work through, but we made it through. And interestingly enough, I had little cards, like um, color-coded cards that they would pick out of a bag to be to find their partner. I also tried randomizer with the computer. And as though the randomizer is easier, starting out, they were not into it. They still thought that even though they saw it be randomized, that I was the one who was picking their partners, which was absolutely not the case. So we definitely had to do a lot of sessions, problem-solving tasks, where they actually physically picked out their partner so they could really have ownership of it. Now they're a little more flexible with it, which is good because they're trying to get into it, right? Next thing, working together. Kindergartners are still learning how to work together, how to actually like play with somebody, really try to get things done together. So that was definitely something else that we really had to work on before we could dive into anything else. My first task for my kids was there's one marker, stay in your space and share your marker. And they did do a pretty good job about sharing their marker. I had to like be like, all right, switch, switch, switch. And now I don't really have to do that at all, which is great because it's kind of a hassle to tell them when to switch their marker. They're great. So something I did notice is that they are not yet good at working together to make one thing. So I was like, all right, pulling it back. The next thing we're gonna do is try to build something together that's more hands-on, not necessarily with a marker or writing anything down on their non-permanent surface, vertical non-permanent surface. They're just kind of working in that space together. So I gave them each a box of blocks, little box of blocks, a little one, box of blocks, and I was like, okay, build something together. That was super successful. The kids loved it, absolutely loved it. I was like, okay, great. We're working on working together. The next thing I did was have them give them the challenge of working together at their whiteboard, drawing something together. So making one picture together. And I did have to model that with another student to be like, all right, how are we going to decide what we're going to draw? Now, when do we decide what's next? Also became really successful. It's like, all right, cool. I think we're ready to dive into this. And throughout our learning time, the school year, I definitely had them work in random groups to do other things. So they got really got used to it and it wouldn't be such something that they got so stuck on. I definitely thought that was the groundwork we needed. So to recap, we worked on sharing a marker. We were becoming more okay with getting a random partner every time and trying to really work together and trying to stay on task was our next big thing. But that's, if you teach little kids, you know, that's a year long process. So those are definitely the things that we are working on. And the next challenge was finding the tasks, finding the tasks that these, that our kids are going to use that are appropriate for kindergarten, because when they come in, some students are already counting to 100, writing numbers, subitizing all of it. And some kids come in with a lot, a lot of growth potential. So next step, figuring out what's a good task for those kids.